introduce everyone to Robert Saxon. I have known Robert for a while. Um, Robert's just an incredibly authentic human being who's devoted his life to consciousness and Ayurvedic practices and is a, a long time practicing Buddhist. I think we spoke last time about his incredible products that I'm addicted to, his Ayurvedic face and body oil. If you want to know about it, email me. They're off, off the charts uh, for nurturing and beauty and all that. Um, but today we're here with Robert um, to kind of fall into ourselves and have a guided meditation. So I'm turning this over to Robert. And actually, Robert, I know you have a blog and everything. So before we go into the meditation, if you want people to and quietly, I'd like to put that up on the chat. Sure. So how do they, re I'll just type it in, how they can reach you. If they go to the pathofcivility.com. Path of civility. Civility.com. <laughs> and there's a, there's a blog that's there. And then uh, if they go to YouTube and just type in my name, uh, I've done several podcasts to support the blogs. Okay. I think I spelled that review wrong. Okay, wait, we're getting someone else. And here we go. We're at a wonderful group here of 15 people. Okay, Robert, it's your show. And okay, I'm, I'm just going to, um, I'm just uh, altering the height of my screen. So hold on a second. I know there's like a special way like you're supposed to sit with this Zoom thing, but I, I haven't figured it out yet. Just hold on a second. Sure. Anybody want to share anything while we're waiting for Robert? Is everybody okay? I'm excited for a big Buddha. Good. All right. So, um... Is everybody mute unless you want to speak and then you can unmute. I'm muting too. So I think it's really wonderful to get together to do this. Um, the Medicine Buddha practice is the basis of the work that Melanie and I have done for, I guess, the last 30, 40 years. And some of you are familiar with Ayurveda. And the last time Melanie and I were on together, we talked about Ayurveda. And what's very interesting is that there is, and I think Kim brought it up because uh, I mentioned it, is that um, a fifth century book uh, about Ayurveda started, and Brahma, who is the supreme godhead of, of, of the Hindu pantheon, but also the supreme godhead, remembered Ayurveda. And then the question becomes, well, where did Brahma, remember Ayurveda, and the cosmic history goes two limitless kalpas ago, which is, if you look at the idea of a kalpa being one with 60 zeros after it, which takes you way past, you know, millions, billions, trillions, blah, 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 blah. <clears throat> so I just tell people it's long ago in a galaxy far away, and just leave it at that. But the idea is to try and help us to drop out of our own sense of time, because our own sense of time is very, very distorted. Our own sense of time is based on the sense fields that we have in this current body. So what's interesting about that is, and I'm sure most of you will attest to this, uh, having had a more sequestered life or had your life been interrupted more than usual is that, for example, um, there's two things that happen on Friday uh, in our house. One is that on Thursday night, the garbage needs to be taken out and the garbage trucks come by. Well, that seems to be happening one after another, but it's Friday to Friday. And then on Friday night, I have a 103-year-old friend who's an old 
Jewish psychoanalysts, psychiatrists. And what we do is we do Sabbath prayers together virtually. We used to go over to their house, but right now the vector visiting them is, is way too big and we're trying to keep them safe. So we've been doing it virtually, but it seems like every Friday comes around. So the concept of time is really kind of very, very illusory. And in fact, there are some Tibetans that say that time is not horizontal, but rather vertical. <laughs> that things are happening all at once. But we have a concept that makes us get a sense of duration in a way that I think is quite hard for all of us. In the context of this time, what the historical Buddha said was that in the future, there will be a time when the Ayurvedic um, energy called Vata, which the Tibetans call Lung, would be highly disturbed. And in that time, there would be an increase of mental illness, an increase of degenerative disease, um, a time period which was very draconian, very mediocre, very hard. And there are some that think that we are now in that dark age period the beginning of that dark age period. And the idea is that this energy disturbance of vata or lung makes it so that we get caught up very much in what in Ayurveda, in Tibetan Ayurveda, and in the tradition of the Medicine Buddha are three poisons. Those three poisons are ignorance, attachment and aggression, which basically means we don't understand reality, we think we know better, and we get annoyed with people who disagree with us. And that has gotten to such a proportion in terms of our attachment to our ideas, our addictions to having the world a certain way, that addiction, that attachment is associated with vata. Some of you may be familiar with what's called the Four Noble Truths. And in the Four Noble Truths, the first Noble Truth is that we suffer, and we suffer because of ignorance. But the second Noble Truth is we suffer because we cling, we get attached. And actually what it is, is although ignorance causes us to see the world erroneous, erroneously, attachment makes it so that we hold on to ideas that are not really based in reality. They're based on what's in our heads. So the, the commitment of every Buddha is to help us overcome those three poisons, ignorance, attachment, and aggression. And that was the case for the Medicine Buddha, who two limitless kalpas ago saw that we suffered, wanted to understand why we suffered, and like all Buddhas, came to the conclusion that it was because of these three things. And it affects us mentally, it affects us physically. It affects all aspects of our lives. Robert, can I ask you a question though? I know Go you, ahead. Can you elaborate just, we know what attachment is, but could you just do a little blip on ignorance and aggression? How that, what that means in the Buddhist perspective? Like, ignorance basically means that we are living in an illusion. <laughs> illusion of separation. We have an idea of self and other, something that's outside and something that is us. And this is a very 
confused view. And so the ignorance is a primordial, not even primordial actually, it's just the, uh, a, um, I think it's part of the path actually that we have to wake up. And we wake up from that confusion. We wake up from that sense of bifurcation. We wake up, up from that sense of separation. The aggressiveness has to do with oftentimes how hard it is for us to let go. And that creates um, especially, um, I mean, we all are aware of aggression outside in the world. You know, it's something to be worried about in this time, especially we see the consequences of aggression. But in Buddhist terms, the worst aggression is the aggression we hold towards ourselves. And what that is, is that particular aggression is almost like a, um, a disappointment that if our attachment to our world is not holding our world together properly, then there must be something wrong with us. <laughs> There's got to be something wrong. And therefore, you know, because our world is not working the way we want it to, obviously, after we've blamed everybody else and we're still suffering, then we start beating up on ourselves. Or maybe that's where we start, is we start beating up on ourselves and then we realize that it's much easier to beat up on others so that we can forget how much we hate ourselves. So the idea is how do you overcome that self-loathing? Because in fact, and this is, this is an issue of conscience for everyone. It's like, um, I remember there's one teacher, Trumper Rinpoche, once said that in the realm of Shambhala, which is an enlightened realm, that exists around this planet. Oy vey does not exist. Oy vey is not acceptable. Okay? Maya kalpa, whipping ourselves with our own chains, is unacceptable. Feeling lesser than is unacceptable because when we do that, we are denigrating the Buddha nature that we have. We are actually insulting our own Buddha intelligence. The quickest way to not make it so you don't get anywhere in life is through self-loathing. So the basic message is drop it. <laughs> get over it, okay? If you think you are lesser than, if you think you are a horrible person, there is no way out of that. There's no amount of analysis that you can have to get out of that. That is the change that you inflict on your own mind, which is the worst insult you can do to your enlightened potential. You know, Robert, what you just said is so simple and we all forget it, that it's, it's like a sin against God that by chastising ourselves and judging ourselves and and everything you spoke about, which does stem from attachment, that's where the real pathology begins. Absolutely. That's why they talk about attachment. Being fixated on those concepts is the problem. And then what we do is we beat ourselves up until we come up with a better concept. Or we think there's a better concept that we could have. And the attachment is really the ego. Yeah. Right? It's Jane, changing rooms on the Titanic. Uh, Jane has a question. Go ahead, Jane. You're muted. Unmute yourself, Jane. Okay, I did. Thank you. But there's another point of view here, which is creating disasters yourself and not taking responsibility. There is a flip side. There's an A and a B. And 
oh, hey, I didn't do it. You know, I'm the greatest genius ever. That doesn't work either. No, but the, but the idea is you might do an awful thing and you should be responsible for it. Well, there's no there's nothing there's nothing wrong with remorse. Okay. There's nothing wrong with remorse and being able to admit that you've blown it. Yeah. But then when you turn it into a mutilation of okay. yourself, okay. Then there's a problem. But the idea that remorse Basically, I mean, what's really interesting about every advanced tantric sadhana in Buddhism, okay? This is the way, the formula for a tantric Buddhist, Buddhist sadhana goes like this. I have an intent to I want to heal myself and I want to heal others. So the first thing I do other than for that intention is I want to invite into my world all cosmic forces, all Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, saints, gnomes, fairies, earth, earthbound spirits, whatever it is, I want to invite the visible and the invisible world that have the ability to heal to join me. So I create an invitation that shows that I really appreciate the healing that is available through Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, etc., etc. Then what I do is I commit myself. And in committing myself, that's usually what in Buddhism is called refuge. Okay? We take refuge in the idea that we want to commit to that healing. And we're asking all those forces around us to join us. And then what we do is we celebrate and say, if I could share everything and make every resource I had available to make that possible, I want that to be what happens. And then, once we've done that, once we've committed ourselves, once we've gotten all cosmic forces of healing on board, then we go to work, okay? We go to work with seeing, giving, using some kind of energy, and for example, in a Buddhist tantric sadhana, it is a vision of the world. It's the use of sound, like mantra. And then what you do is you work with all of that on and on and on. And you try and focus on it as best you can. Then you come to the end of that. And then, more than likely, you realize that there are times when you were self-centered. There were times when you were unfocused. Then there were times when you were thinking about dinner or the date you were going to have or the lousy event that happened here or there. And your mind's going all over the place. Okay? And what you do is you have a moment of confession, of remorse, where you go, you know, my real intent is to try and make healing happen. But there are times when my self-centered view gets in the way of my intention. And I really acknowledge that. And I commit myself to wanting to do it better next time. And then, after you've done that confession and that feeling, then what you say is, if I did anything of value in this time, I want to share it unconditionally. I want to give it away. Okay, because nobody gets out of here without us all getting out of here. <laughs> so what we do is we want to share good feeling, because when we share good feeling, it grows exponentially. We can see that, okay? Yeah. If we give our dog a treat, and we watch our dog's tag, uh, tail wag, the happiness of the dog makes us happy, okay? Mm -hmm. When we are somewhere and we give something, like, you know, you've been to a really beautiful restaurant and you're taking home your doggy bag of food. Meanwhile, there's somebody on the street corner who's just basically freezing and hungry. And you decide you don't need to take that extra strip of sirloin to work tomorrow. You can give it to someone on the street and you do it. And they say, God bless you. 
and you say, bless you as well. And you walk away feeling much fuller in your spirit than you did before. Yes. So there's a way in which that sharing at the very end is a very, very important aspect of Buddhist Tantra. Okay? Okay. So, what we're going to do is I'd like everybody, we're going to do a visualization on the Medicine Buddha. And I've asked, in a moment, I'll ask Barbara to share that screen that has images of the Medicine Buddha. Okay, and then I'll give you the visualization around it. This is a very simple guided exercise. And maybe what we can do before we start that is I want to go through for everybody to hear the sound of the mantra, okay? So if you have a paper and a pen, and you can write this down if you don't already know it. And the mantra, and Barbara, you could write this down on the chat bar as well. It is te, T-A-Y, ya, Y-A-H, ta, te ya ta, then om, like om, Beth, B E H, Khan, K A H N, Z, D Z E H. So Bekanze. Then you say it again, Bekanze. So write that again, Barbara. Put that in there. Second Bekanze. Wait, Robert. Did I? Is it D Z E H? Was that right? Yeah, that's fine. You got it. So te ata om be kanze, be kanze. Then maha be kanze. Maha means great. Ze. And then ra, that's R-A-H. Za, D-Z-A-H. Sa, S-A-H. Oh, wait, wait, sorry. Wait, uh, oh, Robert, I think I messed up. It's Ra and then D Z A H and then S A H? Yes, Sa. Uh, okay. Mood. How do you spell that? M O O D. Oh, okay. Ga, G A H. T A Y. Gate. So ha. So Wait, the mantra comes after T A Y. I'm so sorry. So ha. The beginning? No, no. The last one. Gate was... so ha. S O H A H. So ha. Okay, got it. So if you get used to it, you look at it. Te ata om bekanze. Bekanze. Maha bekanze. Radzad samud gate soha. So try and say it. Teata om bekanze. Bekanze. Maha bekanze. Maha bekanze. Radza. Samud gate soha. Radza. Samud gate soha. So the idea behind any mantra is, for one thing, it's not like you are, oh, I am so small and you are so great, and please bless me with this. Most mantras are trying to connect with the energy. They are commands. They are wanting you to feel infused with the healing potential of a Buddha. That's what it's about. You're not trying to, you know, and as a result, as you begin to honor yourself and your Buddha nature, and you direct that energy to where you do feel weak, or you do feel weakened, or you do feel sore, or whatever it is, and you direct that energy towards that. Teyata Om Bekanze, Bekanze, Maha Bekanze, Radzad Samud Gate Soha. And you do that again and again and again. A good friend of mine used to say it's like putting um, a virus in your neuroses programs. What's very interesting is I learned something yesterday from listening to a, uh, a presentation by Dr. John Duyard, 
who explained that what happens is that onto our brains, on our myelin sheaths, which are fatty sheaths, is stored painful emotions, all sorts of emotions. They're stored on the myelin sheaths around our nerves. And therefore what happens is fat lingers. And so we have recurrence of negative thinking. And what happens when you do pranayama, when you do yoga, when you do mantra, you begin, you begin to erase the bad memories and stuck emotions in that myelin layer around the nerves. And as a result, you begin to brighten and lighten your mind. Your mind becomes lighter as you become enlightened. So, that's what we're going to do. We're going to be reciting that after we go through this particular visualization. So before I begin that, the other thing I'd like you to do is this. Reflect on yourself, places in your body and whatever that feel like they need help, healing. But I also want you to think about various individuals in your life who you'd like to send energy to. Just think about that for a few moments. And then as we're doing this, let me just open it up to questions for maybe two or three minutes and then we'll begin the visualization. And I just want to ask everyone, because some people d to please um, put your audio on everybody uh, during the meditation, but please go ahead and ask Robert questions. What's the doctor's name with this wonderful myelin sheath information? Dr. John Duyard, D-O-I-L-L-A-R-D. -L -L A-R-D. Okay. John Duyard. Thank you. I like that. I like that. Very cool. It's on my re it's my re most recent Facebook post. I put it out there. I mean, a couple of times past. I just sent that art that whole um, video on it. It's really great. Great. Thank I, you. I, don't I know have a know. question. Yeah. Um, yes. Hi, it's Kim. You can't see me for whatever reason. That's my fine, Kim. Go ahead. Okay. My question is: um, Are we directing to to someone that um, has a lot of negativity? and hurt around them? Is, is Especially that around them. Okay, that's what I thought. Thank you. The idea of all Buddhist meditations is you include everybody in it, you know? I mean, think about it. I mean, we can think of various people that we, we know that many people have a lot of negative thinking about, especially in more progressive circles, okay? <laughs> but think about what it's like in your life if all that negativity is being focused on you. Do you think that's going to make that person make any better statements or decisions? Chances are no. One of the most beautiful statements I remember um, uh, being with Ram Dass. And Ram Dass talked about his very beautiful, elaborate Hindu shrine. And on his Hindu shrine, he had a picture of Bob Dole. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Um, yeah, but would he have a picture of Hitler? Mm. I know it's Why bad not? to start with the Holocaust, well, actually, but well, here's, I never do it. Here's an interesting story. Um, okay. There's one teacher by the name of Tenga Rinpoche who passed away, who would go into a dream state and go to teach Hitler, who had his own private hell. So Hitler and Stalin had their own private hells. And so Tenga Rinpoche would go to them and help them to begin to liberate their minds. Well, interesting. Some people can. We some, you know, go where you can. Go where you can. Don't see that as a limitation. See that where your greatest strength is is where you focus it. You know, that's a real important aspect, especially within Buddhism, is the idea of the uh, what are called the paramitas or the. Uh, the, the perfections is that what you do is if you have a certain capacity that is not your strength, but you have another capacity that you're really, really good at, strengthen that virtue. And what happens is when you strengthen one virtue, it brings all the others along. 
you might not be very generous, but you're very kind. You don't have a lot of money, but when you practice kindness, suddenly your generosity expands. It goes like that. Comment? Yeah, hi, go ahead. A poem I wrote, we're often conceptipated, so stuck in our concepts that there's no movement Stay open for life. I, I spent time with the Dalai Lama, Karmapa, and you know, I, I, right. what you're sharing is so wonderful. And, and the focusing on if we don't love ourselves, how can we love anyone else? Exactly. And, and there's a prayer that I say day and night when I ring a special bell that doesn't stop. And that's may all the beings in all the worlds be happy and at peace. Absolutely. And, and that said, day and night, as I pass through my little space capsule here in the Catskills, blessings, and I'm grateful to be here. Yeah, the four immeasurables. Thank you. I, I, uh, to me, that's it. I do that prayer every day as well. It's huh. so important, and that was because of the time being with the Karmapa. So you're in the Catskills. So you, you had been with the 16th Karmapa. I, I saw him when he came to Kingston two years yes. ago, and I was with him before. I recorded, I, vid, I videotaped him, I spent time with him as well. That, my stories go on forever. Wait, my yeah, life right. is my bucket list. My life is my bucket list. Yeah, the, I more I, the more I focus on, on how to be of service incognito, beyond praise and blame, it's been an extraordinary journey. Uh, but for another time, so I'm so grateful. Absolutely. Thank you. I'm muting my sound now. <laughs> okay, so let's do this meditation, okay, folks? All right, so Barbara, what I want you to do is I want you to put on, share screen with all those images of the Medicine Buddha. <clears throat> Great, okay. So there they are. One will do, but now we've got a bunch of images, so you can just look at whatever which one appeals to your mind. Barbara, you're taking them away? You can do that one. Okay, let's just do that one. That's a really good one. Just leave them there. Okay? And of course, it says order today, which means uh, that's our order of today, and we're subscribing to the Medicine Buddha. So just get yourself comfortable. No need to write anything at this point. Make sure you're just, your back is relaxed. You're in a position that feels comfortable. If you want to get into a more meditative state, have your tongue resting behind your top front teeth. So it helps to create more cerebral spinal fluid movement. Makes your mind more easy. And as we settle down into a state of centered awareness, it takes a moment to appreciate the opportunity we have here and now. So you breathe in and out, become aware of the formless passage of air as it goes in and out at the tip of your nose. Let all distractions that arise in the mind be released with every natural exhalation. And then we pay attention to what we can appreciate in this life here and now. We first recognize the preciousness of our own human birth where we have the time, circumstances, and capacity to learn from, practice the methods, and experience the blessing of enlightened beings. Looking around us in the world and the difficult circumstances others have or experience, we appreciate how fortunate we are.
Second, although this time circumstance and capacity is with us now, all can change in an instant and will certainly be gone at the moment of our own death. There are no guarantees in this life other than the certainty that regardless of how stable our situation appears, we shall die. Appreciating impermanence, we resolve to use our human birth wisely. Third, we appreciate that the causes and conditions that give us this opportunity and will inevitably lead to their disappearance are the direct result of our own previous actions. Ultimately, we are the authors and masters of our own fate. We blame no one else for what we face and commit ourselves to taking responsibility for how we think and act in the moment. It is our thoughts and actions now that will determine what we shall have to face in our future. And finally, appreciating that we are masters of our own destiny and that our true potential is to be as a Buddha. We recognize the futility in placing any ultimate value on material and worldly pursuits and commit ourselves to a path of spiritual awakening for the benefit of all. And now, before us, out of the expanse of a clear turquoise blue sky and just above the horizon, there rises the perfect form of an enlightened healer, the Medicine Buddha. Shimmering with the deep, rich color of crystalline lapis lazuli, he sits in the diamond or lotus posture, bearing all the marks and signs proclaiming his enlightened state and capacity to heal all afflictions. His rich thick hair is tied up in a top knot and the simple maroon robes of a monk cover his powerful and dynamic body. His hands rest on his right knee, his right hand rests on his right knee. And between his thumb and index finger, he holds the stem of an aurora, the king of medicinal plants. His left hand rests in his lap, holding a bowl filled with healing elixir. He sits radiant on a lotus throne supported by eight mighty white lions. Having overcome all conditions that obstruct his realization, his gaze is triumphant, yet kind. He is as real as anything, yet as insubstantial as everything, like a rainbow. So you can look at that image in front of you, or you can try in your mind's eye to visualize this deep blue enlightened form with beautiful kind eyes, appearing as a Buddha, but in a blue, blue appearance rather than a gold appearance. With his hands, as I've described, with holding a, a, a plant with his right hand, 
a bowl in his left, and he's just looking at you, and you're looking at him. Looking upon the Medicine Buddha, we are inspired, feeling confidence in the unlimited capacity of his blessing and ability to heal, we think or say, and I'll say this out loud for all of us, to you, teacher, fully aware master and adept, the fully awakened Lord of Healing and King of Lapis Lazuli Light, I bow and open myself up to the healing power of your blessing. So this is a refuge of a commitment right now for us to connect. To you, teacher, fully aware master and adept, the fully awakened Lord of Healing, and King of Lapis Lazuli Light, I bow and open myself up to the healing power of your blessing. To you, teacher, fully aware master and adept, the fully awakened Lord of Healing, and King of Lapis Lazuli Light, I bow and open myself up to the healing power of your blessing. So just feel a heart connection between you and the heart of the Buddha before you in your mind's eye or in the image that you see. Feel that heart connection. We now recite the Medicine Buddha's mantra, the archetypal vibrations that help to eliminate all ignorance, attachment, and aggression, the three poisons that are at the root of all suffering. We'll recite this mantra as many times as we can. And as we do this, we see the Medicine Buddha's radiance, this deep, rich blue color, grow, reaching as far as we can imagine throughout all directions in space bringing healing energy to each and every being it touches. At first we see this like go to friends and relatives for whom we are concerned, then everyone in general, and finally even to those we have difficulties with. We include everyone in this blessing of radiance and healing. So I'm going to start the mantra and I'm going to use a particular tune and join in and then eventually we'll do it a little bit more quickly on our own. But let's just try and do this together and I'll start it off. So everybody un unmute then. Unmute. Every everybody unmute. Teyata om bekanze bekanze maha bekanze. Rajat Samut Gate Soha Teata Om Bekanze Bekanze Maha Bekanze Rajat Samut Gate Soha. So just join in. <clears throat> Teata Om Bekanze Bekanze. Mahabe Kanze Rajat Samukati So Teata Om Be Kanze Be Kanze Mahabe Kanze Rajat Samukati So Teata Om Be Kanze Bekanze Mahabekanze Rajat Samukati Soha Teata Om Bekanze Bekanze Mahabekanze Rajat Samukati Soha Teata Om Bekanze Bekanze, Mahabekanze, 
Radza Samurgate Soha Teata Om Bekanze Bekanze Mahabekanze Radza Samurgate Soha Teata Om Bekanze Bekanze Mahabekanze Radza Samurgate Soha Teata Om Bekanze Bekanze Mahabekanze Radza Samurgate Soha Teata Om Bekanze Bekanze Maha Bekanze Radza Samurgate Soha Teata Om Bekanze Bekanze Maha Bekanze Radza Samurgate Soha Teata Om Bekanze Bekanze Maha Bekanze Radza Samurgate Soha Teata Om Bekanze Bekanze Maha Bekanze Radza Samurgate Soha Now to recite it to yourself or out loud if you want and just do it at any pace you want. You can go slower or you can go quicker. I'm just going to do it as I would normally do, just to, just to get into the practice of it. But um, recite it over and over and over again, and then we'll come back together at the end. Teatum bekanze bekanze, ma bekanze razi samagati soati. 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 Thank <laughs> you. 
recitation of mantras to a close. The medicine Buddha before us comes closer and closer, dissolving into us through the crown of our heads. We now rest in a state where the illusion of separation between ourselves and the medicine Buddha vanishes. And we remain in that state for as long as we can. When we recognize that our minds have become discursive once more, we instantly see our body, mind, and spirit as being none other than the Medicine Buddha. And with this view, we commit ourselves to behave in all matters as a Buddha. And we dedicate the merit 
of this meditation in the spirit of the Diamond Way tradition by saying aloud or to ourselves. By practicing in this manner, may I quickly attain the realized state of the Medicine Buddha. And having done so, may I help each and every being I meet to reach that same state. And just think of this meditation, think of this last prayer and feel like you're sending out energy in front of you and behind you to the right and left above and below you and you're sending out this healing energy in all directions you're connecting to this zoom platform and imagining that every zoom conference call all over the planet is just having this blue medicine buddha light go into those screens affecting absolutely everybody that connects to this platform you just see it spread out further and further until you can't even imagine how far it's going in all directions. And then with this new awareness of being inseparable from and none other than the Medicine Buddha, slowly and in your own time, Become aware of the space you're in and the situations we find ourselves in here and now. And so, Barbara, if you want to just switch back to. Uh, there we are. That was so powerful and beautiful. I don't know about anyone else, but it was it brought me to tears. It was incredible. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, anybody? I mean, I know it's it's a it's a wonderful space to be sharing, and to me, this is where we realize that the first time. I realized that a medium like this could be used like this was actually and the gentleman that we were sharing with earlier was with the 16th Karmapa who did this actually in the Catskills. It was a very funny situation. But he basically transmitted his energy through the screen and everybody could feel it. So thank you all for being part of this and making it possible to send this out. So if you have any questions, and what I'll do is I will send to Barbara the reprint of this particular meditation because it's in my book Tibet and Ayurveda, but I can send out the reprint of it. Um, I also have it on a CD form so you can listen to it if you ever want to. But um, questions? I would love to just express my gratitude because that was so powerful and transcendent and beyond. I'm so blown away by that, by this experience. I'm deeply grateful for how you guided and led and that channeling right there with you and Barbara and everybody's voices and the healing that I just received and that I feel and that I know that we can all obtain any time we want like this is revolutionary and so deeply meaningful and enlightening. So thank you so much. What's, what's so, uh, you're Bonnie? I'm Shira. Here, Shira, hi Shira. Because uh, I sometimes the names appear, sometimes you know what's so funny, or so it's so beautiful right now, is that the light behind you is this really luminous blue. It's, I mean, it's, it's not only just the sky. Oh my God. Also, That's amazing. It's, That's it's amazing. Wonderful. 
<laughs> That's amazing. Thank you for sharing Wonderful. that. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, sure. Oh my God. Can I ask a question? Sure. Okay. Is there an advantage or uh, that's a bad concept, I know, but to do it as fast as you did? Because, my God, how did you do that? And uh, um, My teacher was an auctioneer. I was going to say, I've been to a cattle auction, and, yeah. and, I, and I didn't want to say that because, you know, I don't want to make a... His, his name was Kimber Karcherivice. He, he was the abbot of the monastery in Woodstock, um, an amazing teacher. And what he really wanted you to do is he really, and the importance of doing it like that, if you're going to do it that fast, is you have to hear every syllable in your mind. That's what you yes. have to do. So there's no virtue in it. It's just that as a teacher, that's what he did. And the commitment, when we took the commitment to uh, perfect the practice, was the idea is that uh, every, uh, you have to practice um, that, um, so you have to have it so that you do a hundred thousand of as many syllables there as there are in the mantra, you do a hundred thousand of each syllable. So that means in order to fulfill the commitment to my teacher, Kemper Emiche, I had to do 2,300,000 Medicine Buddha mantras, which I've done over my life. But wait a minute, are you counting at the same time? Like that's one. Well, what you do is you have a mala, you have a mala, oh, okay. and then you count and you do it that way. So uh, we just did that. That's just old Buddhist practice. And it's lovely to set that as just a strange goal or whatever you want to say. But the idea is just to do it a lot, do it often. Lot. I find that what's really wonderful um, is I do it, I do it on airplanes because you have so much white noise. No one hears what you're saying. So you might as well just mumble to yourself, and just fill the entire cabin of the plane with medicine Buddha. When you walk down the street and you have a mad person who can't hear you at all, there they are, they're standing in front of you and they are just babbling at your face. They can't hear you, Where's the and they walk up to you, and you know that that's what they're doing, and you feel incompetent. Why not use a sacred language? Just say, and infuse their mind with that. And when you say you feel, oh, go ahead. Every, if we can have it. Let's yeah. mute everybody that isn't speaking at once, and then that way we can get it. All right. So where are we now? Robert, I have a question. Go ahead. People want to get the, I mean, I got it all till the last line as far as the pronunciation, and it felt so good to kind of say it in a flow. So is, are you saying that there's, you have a CD that has that chant? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it does it, this whole guided visualization. It's, uh, it's on our website, diamondwayayurveda.com. You go to guided visualization and healing meditations. Uh, you'll find it, Barbara. Maybe what you can do is just post the link on Life Balance if people want it. Um, but it, it takes you, there's several different healing meditations on there. There's one that's a chakra healing, and then there's the medicine Buddha healing. So Robert, will you come back and do this? This was I. I, I just think everything is so heightened now <laughs> that I. This was very powerful. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm. I'm quite happy to do it. I mean, really, to be honest, um, even if we did this once a month or whatever, you just decide with your community when you want to do it. I love sharing this with people. If 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 I was able to uh, have a group here in our in our prop on our property i'd be doing it but right now we're not inviting anybody to our property so the more i can do this with folks in this format uh i think it's wonderful for everybody and by the way um and it's not necessary but if anyone wants to donate to robert you can send it mm -hmm. to me i'll get it to him 
uh, mm -hmm. right away. Oh, actually, Robert, how can they donate donate to you direct if they want to? Just, no, don't worry, just give it to you and you do whatever you want to it. So guys, this is where we I'll make sure he gets it, but that's, don't feel any pressure about it's that. Not at all, really. I have a physical question, Robert, because I have a hard time. <clears throat> I might get very hoarse, and I'm figuring that that's something that would be in your training. I get very hoarse doing this, and I have to stop. I can't do this. I just find I find this with chanting in general. I just didn't know if you had a any advice on that. <laughs> well, I mean, you can hear what my voice is like, okay? So I go in and out of more dryness and less dryness in my throat. Have a glass of water next to you. It's I fine. I did. I Pop did. And swallow and then just go on. Yeah, um, I when, did that. Okay. When we were when we were doing this, I mean, imagine that um, when I learned this, it was like in 1983, and what happened was that um, it was like come and study the medicine Buddha. I thought I was going to learn about uh, Tibetan medicine for three solid weeks. For about six hours a day, all we did was this mantra. And so, if you can imagine, I mean, like there were teachings, and then the mantra part of it was probably, uh, probably about two hours in itself, just the mantra itself. But there was all there's a much more elaborate visualization to your time. But you definitely needed to get throat lozenges, <laughs> you know, you know, because you were just chanting so much. So, you know, be slippery on. Why? Why not? It's great. Anything that's going to make your throat feel relaxed. But again, don't make this so that you're trying to, that you're going to end up with, uh, you know, that would be kind of um, an oxymoron that I ruined my voice chanting Medicine Buddha. That thank sounds really no. wrong. <laughs> no, I know. Thank you. <laughs> Can I ask you a quick question? Why is he blue? Why is he blue? Every Buddha's got a color. That's him. Well this is blue. Blue is actually the most healing color. That a deep blue is the, considered in Ayurveda um, the most healing color there is. And that deep blue, in terms of a visualization, has to do with the transformation of ignorance. Thank you. Robert, thank you. I um, So I am, of course, selfishly, and for everyone, going to ask Robert back uh, as soon as you can in the next three Okay. Weeks. Yeah, Shira. Yeah, Shira. Oh my God. I, I am blown away. I can't wait. I cannot it's, wait. It's, uh, me too, Robert. Just thank you so much. Okay. Everybody Love have you. a great evening. Thank you, thank Robert. You, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I say hi to Melanie. I will do. Melanie. Yep. Bye.